Nuclear energy. The following notes are a special section based on nuclear energy that won't be found in your textbook. How does nuclear energy work? Nuclear energy is based on the process of fission. Fission is when a neutron is sent into an, uh, an atom's nucleus, usually uranium. It then splits the nucleus, which releases energy. Parts of the nucleus begin to spread in different directions, and a chain reaction occurs. Inside a nuclear reactor, there are many control rods that contain uranium pellets. This is where the fission reaction occurs. There is also coolant. Coolant helps to cool the reactor core. If the coolant stops flowing, the rods continue going through the process of fission, then a meltdown will occur. The coolant not only cools the core so that a meltdown doesn't occur in the plant, but it also transfers the heat from the core to the uh, generation of electricity through turbines. Uranium fuel is used in most nuclear power plants. Pure uranium is known as yellow cake. When this is mined out of the ground, it's a mixture of uranium and oxygen. This is then chemically converted to uranium hexafluoride before it can be used in the power plants. The most common isotope of uranium that is used is uranium-238. This number, 238, indicates the number of protons and neutrons present in the element. As we could have known from chemistry, stability of the element depends on the number of neutrons in the element. Nuclear reactors. Nuclear reactors are the parts that create the whole plant and create the energy. After about 60 years of operation, plants need to be decommissioned. This is because the parts in the nuclear reactors become radioactive, brittle, or corroded, and therefore no longer, no longer are accountable to work right. Decommissioning a plant is going to be more expensive than building a new plant. There are a couple different types of reactors. The breeder reactor is a reactor in a plant that creates energy through fission while also creating more fissionable fuel at the same time. When we look at uh, nuclear energy, we can see open nuclear fuel cycles and closed nuclear fuel cycles. An open nuclear fuel cycle mines uranium-containing ore, stores spent fuel, buries radioactive waste, and decommissions old reactors. A closed nuclear fuel cycle um, produces radioactive waste that must then be buried or disposed of properly. In the U.S. we use light water reactors. Most of the U.S. nuclear energy is overseen by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The concentration of plants is found in the Midwest. This is also where we propose long-term storage in Nevada, the Yucca Mountain region. Right now, the U.S. currently has no underground facilities and stores all of their nuclear waste in plants, in cooling tanks. Radioactive elements. <clears throat> Radioactive decay produces three different types of particles. Alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma particles. These are in order from most to least produced during radioactive decay. When we talk about radioactive decay, we talk in half-life. A half-life is the time that takes for half the mass of the element to undergo radioactive decay. An example would be that if the half-life of element X is 50 years, and you start with 50 grams, after 150 years, 43.75 grams of the element will have undergone radioactive decay. You get this simply by dividing 50 by how many times the half-life goes into the number of years. So, we said that it was 50 years and 150 years long, that means it's gone three half-lives. So we take our 50 grams and divide it in half three times. That remaining number is the amount left to go under a radioactive decay. So we subtract that from 50 to tell us how much has already undergone radioactive decay. <clears throat> radioactive elements, the particles that are released, ionize biological molecules. This essentially splits them. This is why radioactive elements are harmful to humans. In plants, the radioactive waste comes from the nuclear fuel rods. These are then stored in boron-treated water pools or underground if the facilities are, are available. The risks of nuclear fuel rods are that they may heat up and catch fire or release their contaminants. These rods and waste must be stored from 10 to 250,000 years. The pros and cons of nuclear energy. Nuclear energy doesn't contribute to greenhouse gases or air pollution so it's a good option over fossil fuels in that regard. Unfortunately, nuclear energy does create highly dangerous waste that needs to be disposed of properly. 
There was also incidents of plants accidents. In 1986, there was an accident in Chernobyl, Ukraine. And then most recently, there was a meltdown at the Daiichi plant in Japan in 2011. Also, nuclear energy needs government subsidies to become economically feasible. The facilities also range in possibilities for targets um, as terrorist attacks. Construction and maintenance of nuclear power plants is more expensive and difficult than other conventional energy sources such as coal or gas. An alternative to nuclear fission would be fusion. Fusion is when, instead of splitting an atom like in fission, we actually have two nuclei come together. We use lightweight elements such as hydrogen to create this fusion. Fusion is cleaner than fission produced energy. Unfortunately, currently our methods to create fusion-based energy consume more or equal to the amount of energy that is produced, so it is not energy efficient.